Welcome everyone to Coaching This Session. My name is Michael Riordan and I'll be your mindset coach today. And today we're going to be talking about what really makes a person successful. And you might be wondering, well, I can just be successful if I get a nine to five job or if I start my own company. It's not that simple, actually, because even if you find success in a company, do you find success in life? Because success is going to be one of those individual things that are going to be unique and defined by who you are. Because success can be living in a cabin. Success can be having a skyscraper and owning it. Whatever you define success as is going to be, again, unique to you. So today we're going to be diving into that. And I'm going to be bringing on a guest, Kevin Keppel, who helps thriving business owners get to an understanding of where they are because these people typically are highly successful people. But somewhere in between the success and life, they find that something is missing because success is not just having a large amount of money or having thriving businesses or companies. Success can mean many other things. And a word that we use synonymous with success is going to be happiness. Success should bring happiness, but oftentimes success might not bring happiness. Now, can happiness bring success? It's the same thing. It might bring success, but happiness is going to be more of a state of mind than a success. And are you a successful person if you have a happy state of mind? Perhaps. But there's just so much more to success and to happiness and to finding abundance and finding fulfillment in life than just being there. So we're going to be diving into that all today. So stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and to share this video and our audio to help build a like-minded community of people who are trying to get more and have a more positive mindset. When we see success, many people see success as something as only allotted for the very few people. There's a reason why 2% of people succeed wildly in the world. Why is that? Why can't you have success also? What is limiting you from having that type of success? And oftentimes that's going to be us. We get in our own way. So we have to learn how to get out of our way. And this conversation with Kevin and myself is going to be extremely profound in the sense of, can you finally come to the conclusion that you're the person who creates your whole destiny. Because if you can create something meaningful in your life, it starts with you. Because if someone gave you something and you don't know how to sustain it, guess what happens? You're going to find out that you're not necessarily getting the life that you want. So we have to get you into the realm of not only making you successful, making you happy, getting you fulfilled, but getting you in the right mindset to see the obstacles, to see the challenge, and then going from there. So let's get into the interview with Kevin and myself. Welcome Kevin Keppel to Coaching the Session. How are you doing today? Man, I'm doing terrific, Michael. Thanks for having me here. Excited. Of course. So I have you on. You're going to be a business coach and leadership educator. You are also the host of Unlock Your Freedom podcast. And I mean, I can go all day and talk about you, but in your own words, can you please tell the world who you are and how you help them? Yeah, absolutely. Well, as you said, Kevin Keppel, uh, happily living in Dallas where summer is getting fired up. And I really what I spend most of my time doing is working with uh, successful business leaders, helping them transform from kind of the chaos they've created to a life of freedom so that they can make the impact they want to make and live the life they want to live and really find more access to happiness and aliveness. Do you find that like those leaders are, are stuck in their job where they're, where they feel obligated to show up every single day to put in extra hours and then they kind of lose that sense of familyhood or camaraderie? Absolutely. You know, the disconnect is a big, piece that uh, we see over and over again with the people we work with, whether it's an executive inside of a company or a business owner, they've gotten disconnected from kind of the purpose of the work and the meaning behind it. And they're just doing a job and it can look like a lot of different things, you know, apathy where very little is happening or just a very hyperactivity where 
very, very busy, but not necessarily productive mm. and just not a lot of meaning or purpose behind what they're doing or how they're showing up. Would you say these people are like classified maybe as depressed, burned out? Like what would you classify them as? It, it could be stuck, lost. I'm not sure the term you would use to say this person is this. This person is stuck <laughs> and mm-hmm. probably like maybe a little frantic or really just frustrated because definitely know that there's more. And, you know, there's this, maybe a lot of times there's this big thing they want to do, right? They've been putting off, whether it's maybe start their own business or write, write a book or just get in shape. Just There's not doing what they want to do. They're not at living the life that they thought they were going to be living and just kind of disheartened with their role and life in general in a lot of cases. Mm. So when they get to that point, they're broken already or are they just trying to find themselves? Yeah, I wouldn't say broken. I mean, because a lot of times, you know, they're having success in their role or their business, but they're just become kind of a, almost a victim of that success. And mm. they just, you know, because they're so talented and they're high producers, they keep doing more and more and more. And then they really get away from the thing they love doing, the creative piece they bring, whatever that is. And they spend m- most of their days taking care of, you know, admin stuff or maybe trying to find new customers, just doing things that they're not designed to do. They don't get a lot of joy or energy from doing. Just brings in you know frustration a lack of motivation Mm. and when they get into this kind of i guess rut where they're just in a frame of working and they're not so much focused on being fulfilled doing the simple pleasures of life maybe writing a book traveling experiencing life what is the way or what is your method to kind of slowing them down and bringing them back Sure. That's such a great question. Um, slowing down is definitely a big piece of it because you know, it's like rushing around and just missing out on life. Like First and foremost, we need to be present if we want to actually connect with ourselves and connect with other people. And so what we do, so one of the major ways I serve people is we have a mastermind group for you know successful leaders that uh, really want to surround themselves with other professionals that are charging towards common goals, but aren't necessarily competitors. And that's really powerful because, you know, we get to develop the synergy of the collective member of the group. And, you know, I'm a huge fan of masterminds. I'm in a really great mastermind. And so I love just getting around other people who can help me see what being more looks like. And one of the first things we do is work to get crystal clear clarity on like, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Because if we don't know what you want, we have no idea what action to take to go get it. And, And how would we know if we did get it, if we don't know what it is? And we really work to get at that what, like, wait, like, what are you really passionate about creating in your life right now? You know, what do you love? Like, what, you know, that, what do you do for free kind of thing? But what do you do for free that, you know, actually creates value in the world? And you got, that's good. Passion's good, but we've got to figure out how that serves a purpose. You know, how do you mix generosity into that passion? And so that's like the why, you know, what do you want? Why do you want it? And we go really deep on those two questions. First and foremost, before we even get anybody in the mastermind, we do a one-on-one strategy call. And that call alone is so valuable because You walk out of the call knowing crystal clear clarity, what I want, why I want it. But you also know this is what's stopping me, slowing me down or standing in my way. And that's pretty valuable information. And, you know, I know you as a mindset coach, you you know, that's one of the big things you do is about doing more. It's like, what do we need to stop doing quite often? And we also use uh, Clifton Strengths Assessment or Strength Finders back in the day to really help people align to, you know, their natural talents and attributes, which aren't rare. You know, everybody has talent. But what's rare is people who understand how to use those talents on demand at the highest level. And so we help people really get clear initially on, hey, here's what your version of amazing looks like. And here's what it looks like when you give away all your power. And so it's really amazing to see how quickly people like move well beyond the previous limits once, you know, they're aligned with what they want and, you know, how they can serve and execute at the highest level. What I find is many people have distractions where they are looking at a goal, they're trying to get someplace, and then they just distract themselves with something else, whether it be, all right, I'm supposed to be getting in shape. And then when they're supposed to be in the gym, they're on their phone, right? That's just an easy distraction, right? Just, you know, just an easy example. We give ourselves so many distractions. It could be our friends. It could be our family. It could be our career. And we just say, this is keeping me busy, so I don't have time. You and I have the same 24 hours as the most wildly successful people in the world. What makes them different, right? They have 24 hours. We have 24 hours, but yet they're able to do so much more in their days than 
the typical person. Why do you think so many people fall victim of not using their 24 hours to be productive and they just kind of squander it and they just basically are distracted more so than focused? I think you're talking to me uh, 15 years ago. Uh, I wish <laughs> we could have used that advice. Uh, you know, there's just so much coming at us in the world today. You know, TV, social media, friends, family, whatever. And you have access to, you know, unlimited information in your pocket at all times with your phone. And so many people just are leading life without intention. And, mm -hmm. you know, again, that's like the reason in our mastermind group that we start with clarity, like, hey, you know, what do you want, right? Because then you have a really good filter. Okay, does this bring me closer to what I want? This thing I'm about to do, this thing I'm thinking about doing. And if the answer is yes, like, okay, this thing I'm about to do, does it have to be done by me? Or can I empower somebody else to do it? Mm -hmm. Because I need to spend as much time as I possibly can doing what only Kevin can do. And I think, you know, that's really important because if I'm, you know, cleaning toilets or mowing my lawn, like that's a very expensive person to pay to mow the lawn because my hourly rate is, you know, a little bit higher than what I would pay somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. Not that that's not a valuable profession that people do and serve in that way. And I'm very grateful they do, but that's not my genius. And so really, you know, just making sure that we're working with intention towards what we do want, because it's not about what we should be doing. Because there's so many things we should be doing according to everyone else, according to society, but just getting very intentional, like, hey, this is what I want. This is why I want it. And, you know, figuring out what's getting in the way of that. And one of the really great questions you can ask yourself is, hey, you know what? What am I tolerating? What am I tolerating in my life right now? And that'll help you, you know, tighten up your boundaries because what am I tolerating for myself? Am I tolerating average? You know, average behavior brings me average results. And if I want to be above average, I need to treat myself above average. And, you know, it, it's not always fun and sexy to do the work, but, you know, if I do the work, I get the results. It's pretty simple. I have a list of expectations that I follow. I started this probably when I was a teacher and educator, and I learned that if you don't have expectations for the kids, the kids won't show up. So you have to have those expectations. And the same thing with a person, a person won't show up if you, they don't give themselves expectations, setting boundaries, limits, but not be afraid to break your limits of saying, well, this is, you know, as high as I can go. No, no, no. We can go so much more, but we create those boundaries. So we don't get into a realm of burnout. I, yeah, I can cut my lawn. I can clean my house or I can have someone do that service for me. I delegate that service because I would rather be doing something else. Because it's not so much of me spending an hour cutting my lawn. It's what can I do differently in that hour that's going to create more meaning in my business, career, my life. I don't find much fulfillment in cutting my lawn. I have a garden. I actually love doing the garden. So I find joy in that. That's kind of like my Zen meditation type of thing yeah. where I can go there, water the garden, pick the vegetables. I did that, right? And being patient, right? Having a garden is patience, where it's like you're nurturing the garden. And then one day you're going to produce something that you're going to be able to eat. And it's that idea of we're working towards something that we know is going to be good, but we have to be there and support that system. And that's like me watering the garden every single day. And sometimes people get into the habit of not taking care of themselves. And whether it be making sure that they're not overloading their schedule, eating nutritious foods, getting the exercise they need per day. There's just so many things that many people neglect. And I know the world is just so busy and you can pick up your smartphone that's going to just throw the whole world at you at once and you kind of get entwined in that. And it's so easy to go on Twitter and then before you know it, you're on there an hour. To let go of those chains, that bondage of our technology, of, of, of our social media, and then start to be more purposeful. How can people get away from how society is kind of walking us down the technological path of being so dependent on our smartphones, on our computers, laptops, all of that, and then kind of getting back to our true self, looking on the inside rather than on the outside? Man, that's, that's such a great question because, there, like, again, like you mentioned, I don't remember how you said it, but it was great. Like the whole world coming at you at once with your phone. And that's very, very accurate. 
And when that happens, we see all these other ways that we can live or other things that we could do or places we could be. And, you know, the shot of somebody's legs in the beach that says like, ah, Tuesdays or whatever. And you're like, oh, I want to be at the beach all of a sudden. And, you know, we get like that FOMO, which isn't like even a real or productive emotion that's like just manufactured by the ego and by, you know, that feeling of lack. And, you know, you, you were talking about expectations and habits. And I think that's so brilliant because that's like exactly what we're looking to do with our clients. You know, hey, we all have genius, right? But, you know, a genius has so much more to do with habits than it does with genetics. And, you know, do you have the habit of exercising, you know, your genius in a powerful and productive way? And one of the ways that you can do that is make sure that you, you know, are clear again, like, what do I want? And, you know, one thing that we all fundamentally want, we all want to be happy, right? And happiness is a, a skill that you can absolutely develop. However, most people are trying to get external things to bring them this internal happiness and joy. And happiness is an inside job. I don't get happiness from getting this job, getting this car, eating as much ice cream as I can eat, right? I've tried that one. But, uh, you know, they're all like pleasure, right? Those short-term things like sugar is pleasure, right? Getting on Facebook and just looking around for no real reason is pleasure. And, you know, those are all short-term. And you, you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. It's like, hey, I need to do the things day in and day out that are going to bring me long-term happiness. And so with everything you're doing, you know, if you don't give, take the opportunity to reflect, you give up all of your experience because the only time you get experience from your experience is when you reflect. When you're actually doing things in the moment, like you should be present. And if you're thinking about what you're about to say or what you've already done, you're disconnected from the present moment. You're not going to connect with the people sitting across from you. And so man, at the end of your day, end of your week, just look back like, hey, was I doing things that bring me happiness or was I doing things that bring me pleasure? And it's not to feel bad. It's just to do better, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, we're, nobody's perfect. And, you know, if you try to hold yourself to a perfect standard, that's impossible. And you're going to constantly fall short of that. And then you're going to you know, get stuck in that space of lack and not feeling like you're enough, which, you know, what our birthright, we are enough. We come from an omnipotent source, right? Unlimited, mm -hmm. infinite intelligence created us. Now, it didn't make a mistake on us. And so it's really important just to get to that habit of genius. When we get into that realm of self-reflection, when we look at what we did that past week, what we did the past day, maybe sometimes people might be afraid to look at what they did because they're going to see their failures and they're going to see their failures as something negative. If I fail, I see it as a learning lesson more so than, okay, I'm inadequate. But many people in society, when they see failure, they see inadequacy. And that could stem from when you're younger. If you get a F on a test, you failed, right? You go home and you have to get it signed properly. And your mom or dad, whoever is there that has to sign the paper is going to say, why are we not getting B's and A's? Though that conversation might be a negative conversation where the parent is not going to I guess, accept that F, right? They're not going to say, well, let's do something different so we can get an A. It's why are we getting that F typically? That's the majority. I see it all the time. Getting into the realization of society has given us a label where we either pass or we fail, we're accepted or we are ridiculed. It's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't when it comes to failure and success. People see success as either something that they can't attain or something they're afraid to get, or they see failure as something as a lesson, or they see it as something that is atrocious. How can we start to help people understand that failure is not a bad thing? It's a stepping stone to something better. And that's such a great question, Michael. You know, like you really opened an idea that I think so many people need to re-examine the decision they've made because they've decided that failure means like you're a bad person, you're not enough, you know, whatever, all these things that just are opinions of other people. And if you're not failing fairly regularly, then you're probably not doing anything too big. You're probably staying well inside your comfort zone. And if you stay inside your comfort zone constantly, for one, you're going to just keep recycling the past over and over again. And it's like that old movie Groundhog Day, which is like, you know, what every day is the same, but just a little different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that gets frustrating because you're not doing what you came here to do. And so failure is, you know, if you get knocked down, you stay down and you don't ever get up, that's failure, right? And so as long as you get up and keep going 
you know, then there is no failure. And one of the ways that I've really worked to reframe that with myself and the clients that we work with is understanding the plateau, you know, like we have these peaks in our life and it's great when we're shooting up towards our goals and we can see the movement and it's awesome and it's fun. And then we go on a plateau because it's the natural progression. And then sometimes we dip a little bit like a spring compressing, but a lot of people fall off and quit in the plateau, but in the plateaus where we do all of our learning, right? Mm -hmm. When, and it's awesome. There's a great article I read once by Sergey Brin, who started Google with Larry Page way back in the day. And Google grew like really, really slowly in the nineties. And somebody asked Sergey Brin, did it bother you that y'all grew so slowly in the beginning? And he said, no, I loved it because I knew we had such a great product that the later people found us like that much farther down the road, we're going to be that much better of a version of us. Mm. It's the same thing with us. Like when we're in the plateau, we don't have all the eyes on us and we can really get our foundation straight, get ourselves straight and get, you know, more clarity. Okay. What didn't work? What did work? You know, what, what do I need to like keep doing and do better at? And like, most importantly, what do I need to stop doing? Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things we all need to stop doing especially when it comes to ourselves, but also with other people is like really being intentional about being kind more than we're right. Cause you know, we look and we're, Oh, you failed. And then we're right. You know, it's like, dude, just, you know, be kind to yourself because that self-care self-love is so important. Like if I, you know, love myself and have self-care and all that good stuff, then I have love to share with, you know, Michael on his podcast or, you know, this great audience you have or whoever. But if I don't have any love inside, then there's none to share. And it causes me to be compulsive and reactive and to attempt to create from fear. And there's no creating from fear. That's fight, flight, freeze, or faint, right? That's your options. And none of those contain creation. You brought up a good conversation topic where it's like creating that positive self-talk where how we treat ourselves or how we treat others is going to have a huge impact on our mindset. Because if we're going around and we're treating failure or if we're just treating people as a negativity, then that's going to be our mindset where we're just focused so much on that. And then it goes into the realm of being mindful, as you said, with the story of Google, starting off slow, right? And then maybe not having that notoriety from the beginning. We're living in a world where people want instant gratification. Give it to me now. Give it to me quick. That's what I want. That's why it's called fast food. I'm hungry now. Give it to me fast. And then that fast food does something. It makes us slow. It makes us sluggish. So our acts become sluggish, our minds become sluggish, and then we wonder why our life is so slow, but it's moving at a fast pace. Before you know it, it's Friday. Before you know it, 10 years have gone by. And then when you do some self-reflecting, you look back at those 10 years and you realize that you haven't really done much, or you said you were going to do so much more, but when you look at what you have completed, it is only a fraction of what you said. Many people set off to do something, but they don't remain accountable to making sure it goes through to the end. Similar to how if you're going on a hike, maybe you want to reach the top of a hill, top of a mountain, whatever you want, and you just stop halfway in the hike and say, well, that's good enough. Why not get all the way to the top, right? What's stopping you? Maybe you weren't feeling good. Maybe you know your limits, but at the same time, why not push, right? And many people like I said, are just looking for easy. Because as we know, when you climb and you elevate yourself, breathing becomes a little bit more challenging. So as you hire yourself in that elevation, that altitude, now it's a different type of atmosphere. Our bodies have to get used to it. And one of those things that's going to trigger in our mind is fear. Whoa, this feels wrong, right? It's harder to breathe. And that's going to, going back to what you said, fight or flight. And many times we run away. We run away from what we're capable of doing rather than running toward what we can accomplish. And that just creates limiting beliefs in our mind because once we give ourselves a roadblock the first time, guess what happens? Our next time becomes more difficult. And we just have to understand that when we're presented with an issue, attack it then and there. An easy example of this is if you're a male and you want to go speak to a woman at a bar. If you don't go up the first time, you probably won't go up the second time. It's going to be like you already created a block in your mind saying, well, I can't talk to women, right? It's just not going to work. So we have to understand this. Three, two, one, go talk to him. If you get rejected, you get rejected, right? But then you understand in your brain, I didn't die. Because because it seems like at that point in time, oh, this is life or death. She's going to reject me. It's going to be so embarrassing. 
Yes, it might be a little bit embarrassing. Yes, you might get rejected. But there's also a possibility that she actually appreciates that you came up to her and then that she would like to get to know you better, right? I would choose that over the unknown and then going in the future, finding someone you really find attractive or really like that you can build a life with and then not taking the opportunity to meet that individual. Yeah, I think that's so important. It's, you know, it's just courage, right? Courage isn't the absence of fear, it's action in spite of it. And, you know, fear is created for us as humans to keep us from dying from things that we actually need to be afraid of. But the mind can't tell the difference between that perceived threat and that actual threat. And, and I think just having an awareness is so important, just awareness of the truth. You know what, like I'm having this thought, but the good news is I don't have to believe everything I think. And that right there, it took me 30 years to understand that. I don't have to believe everything I think. And to take it a step further, you know what? I don't have to have an opinion about everything I think either. I don't have to have an opinion about what other people think, right? I don't have to have an opinion about everything. That's so freeing because we think that we have to, you know, just go right at everything, every thought we have. Oh, this must be true. I just had this thought. But, you know, our minds are very powerful for sure. But like, I feel like it looks like you're sitting in a chair right now. You're probably not using your legs too much like very powerful for sure, you know, get you where you want to go. But you know what? Like, I don't have to use them all the time. I don't need to use my mind all the time. I think just really staying in the present moment is the best way that you're ever going to approach any interaction with another human. You know, a guy going to a girl at a bar, you know, it's not like, hey, she's definitely not looking for the best line. She's Mm -hmm. just looking for somebody who shows up with a real heart. And man, I've never, ever, you know, walked away from somebody that I was, you know, like, oh my gosh, they were awesome. They were right about everything. But I have walked away from a lot of people who go, man, they're really kind. I really mm-hmm. liked being around them. And, and you know, if that doesn't connect with the kindness, that's okay. Maybe they're not there yet, but they're probably not for you, right? And I want somebody else that's open in their heart too, because I can't connect with a closed heart. And I think it's really beautiful, you know, when you can get into that discipline of choosing love over fear, like that'll serve you. And like, not just romantic, but like professionally, personally, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, et cetera. Because how you do anything is how you do everything. If I show up with courage in my personal life, I definitely show up with it in my professional life. And we have to be courageous into being who we are. Sometimes we just feel like society tells us to be a certain person. And then we just have to be that person. You know, we have to wear these clothes. We have to eat this food. And if we don't, we are ridiculed or we're outcasted. Being courageous to walk your own path and create your own meaning, that requires a huge amount of understanding, your understanding, who you are, what you want. And I always recommend people taking some time to reflect who they are. It could be in the morning, it could be in the evening, and then ask yourself, were you true to yourself that day? Did you create some type of meaning? And even if it was a fraction, that's a small victory in my book, right? Because it's going to compound later. We have to take that first step to being mindful, to being present in the moment. And that was what I did. I I learned how to be more present in the moment because I was just going so fast. I was just moving so fast and it was going to lead to burnout. It was going to lead to a crash and all the things that society has told me, get this job, get this home. I, I went off and that was my goal but then I wasn't finding happiness there. It wasn't until I said, let me slow down. Let me become more mindful in what I do. And it's mindful in everything. When I'm in the gym, when I'm walking, when I'm in the grocery store, being mindful, just not of me, but of who's around me, the smells, the images, all of those things have energy per se, where it's like, I'm going to use that to either make sure I'm doing the best I can that day or that moment, or I'm going to say, well, I'm not seeing this energy as something I want to keep and I want to push and have in my life. That's why it's so important to choose the people that you have around you. And it's not so much of finding people who have the same mindset as you, it's finding people who have something that you desire. It could be kindness, it could be love, it could be appreciation, whatever you're looking or whatever you're seeking, look for that because then that's going to help create the change that you're looking for, for today, tomorrow, and then in your future. Yeah. That right there, if, you know, 
people only get one lesson from you or from this today. It's like, man, be so intentional about who you're surrounding yourself with because you're going to be like the people that are you're around the most. And I love that, you know, you brought the point that, you know, you need to be around people that have things that you'd like to have as well, you know, because I'm not going to go ask, you know, a homeless person for career advice, you know, God bless them. And I hope, I hope things go well for them, but they don't have what I want, right? They don't have excellence in that area. And, you know, they can't give what they don't have. It's not their fault. And that's why, you know, it's so important to be around a community of people that, you know, don't have to be carbon copies of you, but, you know, similar, you know, aspirations as far as, you know, wanting to be more and create more and really, you know, come from that servant place is a, you know, really good person to find. Like, that's why we really are intentional about curating our mastermind group with, you know, inspired leaders that are really wanting to create, you know, something that's really going to create an impact with other people and help other people, you know, have more and be more because of the work they're doing. And that requires humility, you know, because if I've got it all figured out and there's no humility, then there's no growth. And I think it's beautiful, whether it's, you know, the groups that we host or the group that I'm in, like just watching collectively how, you know, one person starts moving, another person starts moving, we all just start moving together. And so, you know, we get to grow as individuals and as a group. And that's how you create a championship in any environment. You know, that's, um, I just... Oh, man, I'm trying not to cry when I say this, but the Mavericks just got knocked out of the Western Conference Finals yesterday by the Golden State Warriors. And, you know, it was because Golden State is phenomenal at playing as individuals and as a team. And Golden and Dallas shows up with like Luka Doncic and these other guys, and it doesn't feel like a cohesive team. And that works if you're like 100% firing on all cylinders. But, you know, like you can't do that every game. You're not going to just have, you know, one person at elite level every single game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, you know, shout out to the Mavs, good season, you guys. But, you know, like it's uh, so crucial that we find people that we know, like, and trust to run with and, uh, you know, just go after whatever it is we want. You can put all the best players on a team and it doesn't guarantee a victory because you have to have that synergy. If you don't have the synergy, then it doesn't matter how good you are, how many points you can put up in a game you have to have that balance. And when you have like a mastermind group, it's automatically creating that balance, that synergy of people coming together. And it might take some time to weave everything to make it functional. But as soon as it is something created, that's going to be profound. Everyone in that group is going to benefit from it. It is a process in the beginning because people have to open up per se, because we're so closed off as a society or as, as individuals where we might not feel like, okay, well, I understand this group is, is here to help me, but I can't trust that freely. And learning how to trust, learning how to be open is a skill. And it is scary in the beginning, right? To bring someone into a space, your personal space, your mind, and then have them help you for your benefit. But then at the same time, you also have to be trusting and understanding that this process is a process. And that's all of life. Life is a process. We have to trust life, but then we also have to have faith in ourselves, where we are putting effort, we are making sure we're giving our utmost, but then at the same time, self-care, compassion, kindness, love is all part of the equation. So if I can from you, Kevin, if you want to talk on that or any last words, and then of course, please tell people where they can find you. Sure. You know, that everything you just said was so profound because man if you're again just choosing love over fear you know like uh, with yourself and with other people like when you have these thoughts that aren't serving you and you know that that worry bus fires up that wants you to hop on and go on a ride to nowhere and you worry about something that takes away all your energy and you know worry always takes you in a circle because you always end up right where you started and so it's you know choosing love over fear looks like this like hey if i truly love myself would i allow myself to continue to think this you know, or if I truly love this person, would I, you know, truly think this or do this thing? And it's so powerful what you said earlier. It's like you have to focus on what you do want because whatever you focus on in your life, that's what's going to expand. You know, if I focus on, you know, love and gratitude, then I have more things to be grateful for, more things to be loved. And, you know, that increases and creates more. And, you know, it's, it's a process. Like you said, it's simple. It's not always easy. And, you know, I think like that's so powerful. This. Mm -hmm keeping it really simple, choosing love over fear and, you know, whatever that looks like in your life. And, you know, if, uh, I'd really encourage you guys, if any of this resonated with you to definitely check out Michael, he's a brilliant mindset coach, like just talking to him before we got started, 
I'm like, man, you should be a hostage negotiator. Like his energy is so powerful and peaceful. I'm like, it just brought me straight down. But, and then the words he's shared, like he knows what he's doing. He knows how to serve and he'll, man, he can definitely get the, that stinking thinking straight for you. But uh, yeah. And if anything, you know, resonated that I said, you can check me out, kevinkeppel.us. A couple of uh, groups starting up in about a month. We, we only do a few masterminds a year. We have one for men and one for women. And, you know, if you want to get around some other like-minded professionals that uh, are looking to quantum leap towards what they want, check us out, kevinkeppel.us. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And all your links will be in the description box below. So we'll have your website. And then if you, and then I'll probably have a link to your podcast, Unlock Your Freedom also, so people can check you out, listen to some of your interviews, some of your words of wisdom, and then they can just start to propel their whole life to something better. So that's what we're trying to do here in coaching the session. Kevin Keppel, thank you so much for coming on. A huge pleasure and so much wisdom. You are a wonderful guest. Thanks for having me, Michael. I really appreciate it. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. And I would like to give a huge thank you again to my guest, Kevin Keppel, for coming on Coaching in Session. He is a breath of fresh air. He is cool as a cucumber. He is easy as a Sunday morning. He is going to be a person that you want to reach out to and to start to incorporate his teachings and some of his methods and his wisdom, basically, and getting a good hold on your potential, right? What is going to be next? Because I understand that there's going to be many people in the world who are trying to get to the next level in life. And sometimes you might hit that plateau that we spoke about. You might finally find a ceiling, but that's not the limit. The limit is going to be what you allow it to be. Now, we do have to be mindful. We have to be careful and aware, but understanding who you are, what you want, what you don't want, are going to be critical factors in your success. We have to get rid of the things that don't need our attention and start to give our life the things that need our attention. So let's fill our days with things that are meaningful to us that are things that we can only do rather than things that are busy work. Because oftentimes we're running around with our head cut off and nothing gets done. So decide today to make a change in your life and whether you do that with me or Kevin, it doesn't matter. My goal is to make sure that you're in a better place. I have wonderful coaches on. I have wonderful people who focus on leadership education on that want you to be leaders, that encourage you to be more than who you are today so tomorrow can be your best life. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, you can email me, coachingaccession at gmail.com. I will see everyone on the next episode of Coaching in Session. Until then, everyone take care.